since many have undertaken to compile an account of the things accomplished among us. Just as they were handed down to us by those who from the beginning were eyewitnesses and servants of the word. It seemed fitting to me as well, having investigated everything carefully from the beginning, to write it out for you in an orderly sequence, most excellent Theophilus. So that you may know the exact truth about the things you have been taught. In the days of Herod, king of Judea, there was a priest named Zechariah, of the division of Abijah, and he had a wife from the daughters of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. They were both righteous in the sight of God, walking blamelessly in all the commandments and requirements of the Lord. And yet they had no child, because Elizabeth was infertile, and they were both advanced in years. Now it happened that while he was performing his priestly service before God in the appointed order of his division, according to the custom of the priestly office, he was chosen by lot to enter the temple of the Lord and burn incense. And the whole multitude of the people were in prayer outside at the hour of the incense offering. Now an angel of the Lord appeared to him, standing to the right of the altar of incense. Zechariah was troubled when he saw the angel, and fear gripped him. But the angel said to him, Do not be afraid, Zechariah, for your prayer has been heard, and your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son, and you shall name him John. You will have joy and gladness, and many will rejoice over his birth. For he will be great in the sight of the Lord, and he will drink no wine or liquor, and he will be filled with the Holy Spirit while still in his mother's womb. And he will turn many of the sons of Israel back to the Lord their God. And it is he who will go as a forerunner before him in the spirit and power of Elijah, to turn the hearts of fathers back to their children, and the disobedient to the attitude of the righteous, to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. Zechariah said to the angel, How will I know this? For I am an old man, and my wife is advanced in her years. The angel answered and said to him, I am Gabriel, who stands in the presence of God, and I was sent to speak to you and to bring you this good news. And behold, you will be silent and unable to speak until the day when these things take place, because you did not believe my words, which will be fulfilled at their proper time. And meanwhile the people were waiting for Zechariah, and were wondering at his delay in the temple. But when he came out, he was unable to speak to them, and they realized that he had seen a vision in the temple, and he repeatedly made signs to them, and remained speechless. 23 When the days of his priestly service were concluded, he went back home. Now after these days his wife Elizabeth became pregnant, and she kept herself in seclusion for five months, saying, This is the way the Lord has dealt with me in the days when he looked with favor upon me, to take away my disgrace among people. Now in the sixth month the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a city in Galilee named Nazareth, to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph, of the descendants of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And coming in, he said to her, Greetings, favored one. The Lord is with you. But she was very perplexed at this statement, and was pondering what kind of greeting this was. And the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and give birth to a son, and you shall name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David. And he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and his kingdom will have no end. But Mary said to the angel, How will this be, since I am a virgin? The angel answered and said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you, for that reason also the Holy Child will be called the Son of God. 
And behold, even your relative Elizabeth herself has conceived a son in her old age, and she who was called infertile is now in her sixth month. For nothing will be impossible with God. And Mary said, Behold, the Lord's bondservant, may it be done to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. Now at this time Mary set out and went in a hurry to the hill country, to a city of Judah. And she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the baby leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. And she cried out with a loud voice and said, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And how has it happened to me that the mother of my Lord would come to me? For behold, when the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the baby leaped in my womb for joy. And blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what had been spoken to her by the Lord. And Mary said, My soul exalts the Lord. And my spirit has rejoiced in God my Saviour. For he has had regard for the humble state of his bondservant, for behold, from now on all generations will call me blessed. For the Mighty One has done great things for me, and holy is his name. And his mercy is to generation after generation toward those who fear him. He has done mighty deeds with his arm, he has scattered those who were proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down rulers from their thrones, and has exalted those who were humble. He has filled the hungry with good things, and sent the rich away empty-handed. He has given help to his servant Israel, in remembrance of his mercy. Just as he spoke to our fathers, to Abraham and his descendants forever. Mary stayed with her about three months, and then returned to her home. Now the time had come for Elizabeth to give birth, and she gave birth to a son. Her neighbors and her relatives heard that the Lord had displayed his great mercy toward her, and they were rejoicing with her. And it happened that on the eighth day they came to circumcise the child, and they were going to call him Zechariah, after his father. And yet his mother responded and said, No indeed, but he shall be called John. And they said to her, There is no one among your relatives who is called by this name. And they made signs to his father, as to what he wanted him called. And he asked for a tablet and wrote as follows, His name is John. And they were all amazed. And at once his mouth was opened and his tongue freed, and he began speaking in praise of God. And fear came on all those who lived around them and all these matters were being talked about in the entire hill country of Judea. All who heard them kept them in mind, saying, What then will this child turn out to be? For indeed the hand of the Lord was with him. And his father Zechariah was filled with the Holy Spirit and prophesied, saying, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he has visited us and accomplished redemption for his people and has raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David. Just as he spoke by the mouth of his holy prophets from ancient times. Salvation from our enemies, and from the hand of all who hate us. To show mercy to our fathers, and to remember his holy covenant. The oath which he swore to our father Abraham. To grant us that we, being rescued from the hand of our enemies, would serve him without fear. In holiness and righteousness before him all our days. And you, child, also will be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go on before the Lord to prepare his ways. To give his people the knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. Because of the tender mercy of our God, with which the sunrise from on high will visit us. To shine on those who sit in darkness and the shadow of death, to guide our feet into the way of peace. Now the child grew and was becoming strong in spirit, 
and he lived in the deserts until the day of his public appearance to Israel. Now in those days a decree went out from Caesar Augustus, that a census be taken of all the inhabited earth. This was the first census taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. And all the people were on their way to register for the census, each to his own city. Now Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the city of Nazareth, to Judea, to the city of David which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and family of David. In order to register along with Mary, who was betrothed to him, and was pregnant. While they were there, the time came for her to give birth. And she gave birth to her firstborn son, and she wrapped him in cloths, and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. In the same region there were some shepherds staying out in the fields and keeping watch over their flock at night. And an angel of the Lord suddenly stood near them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terribly frightened. And so the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy which will be for all the people. For today in the city of David there has been born for you a Saviour, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you, you will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. And suddenly there appeared with the angel a multitude of the heavenly army of angels praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among people with whom he is pleased. When the angels had departed from them into heaven, the shepherds began saying to one another, Let's go straight to Bethlehem, then, and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. And they came in a hurry and found their way to Mary and Joseph, and the baby as he lay in the manger. When they had seen him, they made known the statement which had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed about the things which were told them by the shepherds. 19 But Mary treasured all these things, pondering them in her heart. And the shepherds went back, glorifying and praising God for all that they had heard and seen, just as had been told them. And when eight days were completed so that it was time for his circumcision, he was also named Jesus, the name given by the angel before he was conceived in the womb. And when the days for their purification according to the law of Moses were completed, they brought him up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every firstborn male that opens the womb shall be called holy to the Lord. And to offer a sacrifice according to what has been stated in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young doves. And there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon, and this man was righteous and devout, looking forward to the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was upon him. And it had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. And he came by the Spirit into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus, to carry out for him the custom of the law. Then he took him in his arms, and blessed God, and said, Now, Lord, you are letting your bondservant depart in peace, according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the presence of all the peoples, a light for revelation for the Gentiles, and the glory of your people Israel. And his father and mother were amazed at the things which were being said about him. 34 And Simeon blessed them and said to his mother Mary, Behold, this child is appointed for the fall and rise of many in Israel, and as a sign to be opposed. And a sword will pierce your own soul, to the end that thoughts from many hearts may be revealed. And there was a prophetess, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel, of the tribe of Asher. She was advanced in years and had lived with her husband for seven years after her marriage, and then as a widow to the age of eighty-four. 
She did not leave the temple grounds, serving night and day with fasts and prayers. And at that very moment she came up and began giving thanks to God, and continued to speak about him to all those who were looking forward to the redemption of Jerusalem. And when his parents had completed everything in accordance with the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee, to their own city of Nazareth. Now the child continued to grow and to become strong, increasing in wisdom, and the favor of God was upon him. His parents went to Jerusalem every year at the feast of the Passover. And when he was twelve years old, they went up there according to the custom of the feast. And as they were returning, after spending the full number of days required, the boy Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem, but his parents were unaware of it. Instead, they thought that he was somewhere in the caravan, and they went a day's journey, and then they began looking for him among their relatives and acquaintances. And when they did not find him, they returned to Jerusalem, looking for him. Then, after three days they found him in the temple, sitting in the midst of the teachers, both listening to them and asking them questions. And all who heard him were amazed at his understanding and his answers. When Joseph and Mary saw him, they were bewildered, and his mother said to him, Son, why have you treated us this way? Behold, your father and I have been anxiously looking for you. And he said to them, Why is it that you were looking for me? Did you not know that I had to be in my father's house? And yet they on their part did not understand the statement which he had made to them. And he went down with them and came to Nazareth, and he continued to be subject to them, and his mother treasured all these things in her heart. And Jesus kept increasing in wisdom and stature, and in favor with God and people. Now in the fifteenth year of the reign of Tiberius Caesar, when Pontius Pilate was governor of Judea, and Herod was tetrarch of Galilee and his brother Philip was tetrarch of the region of Ituria and Trachonitis, and Lysanias was tetrarch of Abilene. In the high priesthood of Annas and Caiaphas, the word of God came to John, the son of Zechariah, in the wilderness. And he came into all the region around the Jordan, preaching a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. As it is written in the book of the words of Isaiah the prophet, the voice of one calling out in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Every ravine will be filled, and every mountain and hill will be lowered, the crooked will become straight, and the rough road smooth. And all flesh will see the salvation of God. So he was saying to the crowds who were going out to be baptized by him, You offspring of vipers, who warned you to flee from the wrath to come. Therefore produce fruits that are consistent with repentance, and do not start saying to yourselves, We have Abraham as our father, for I say to you that from these stones God is able to raise up children for Abraham. But indeed the axe is already being laid at the root of the trees, so every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. And the crowds were questioning him, saying, Then what are we to do? And he would answer and say to them, The one who has two tunics is to share with the one who has none, and the one who has food is to do likewise. Now even tax collectors came to be baptized, and they said to him, Teacher, what are we to do? And he said to them, Collect no more than what you have been ordered to. And soldiers also were questioning him, saying, What are we to do, we as well? And he said to them, Do not extort money from anyone, nor harass anyone, and be content with your wages. Now while the people were in a state of expectation and they all were thinking carefully in their hearts about John, whether he himself perhaps was the Christ. John responded to them all, saying, As for me, I baptize you with water, but he is coming who is mightier than I, and I am not fit to untie the straps of his sandals, he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. 
His winnowing fork is in his hand to thoroughly clear his threshing floor, and to gather the wheat into his barn, but he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. So with many other exhortations he preached the gospel to the people. But when Herod the Tetrarch was reprimanded by him regarding Herodias, his brother's wife, and regarding all the evil things which Herod had done. Herod also added this to them all, he locked John up in prison. Now when all the people were baptized, Jesus also was baptized, and while he was praying, heaven was opened. And the Holy Spirit descended upon him in bodily form like a dove, and a voice came from heaven, You are my beloved Son, in you I am well pleased. When he began his ministry, Jesus himself was about thirty years old, being, as was commonly held, the son of Joseph, the son of Eli. The son of Matthat, the son of Levi, the son of Melchi, the son of Janai, the son of Joseph. The son of Matthias, the son of Amos, the son of Nahum, the son of Hesli, the son of Nagai. The son of Math, the son of Matthias, the son of Semain, the son of Josek, the son of Jodah. The son of Jonan, the son of Risa, the son of Zerubbabel, the son of Shealtiel, the son of Neri. The son of Melchi, the son of Adi, the son of Kosum, the son of El Madam, the son of Er. The son of Joshua, the son of Eleazar, the son of Joram the son of Matthat, the son of Levi, the son of Simeon, the son of Judah, the son of Joseph, the son of Jonam, the son of Eliakim, the son of Malia, the son of Mena, the son of Matatha, the son of Nathan, the son of David, the son of Jesse, the son of Obed, the son of Boaz, the son of Salmon, the son of Nashon the son of Ammonadab, the son of Admin, the son of Ram, the son of Hezron, the son of Perez, the son of Judah, the son of Jacob, the son of Isaac, the son of Abraham, the son of Terah, the son of Nahor, thirty-five the son of Sarag, the son of Ru, the son of Peleg, the son of Heber, the son of Shelah, the son of Kinan, the son of Arphaxad, the son of Shem, the son of Noah, the son of Lamech. The son of Methuselah, the son of Enoch, the son of Jared, the son of Mahalalel, the son of Kinan. The son of Anash, the son of Seth, the son of Adam, the son of God. Now Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led around by the Spirit in the wilderness. For forty days, being tempted by the devil. And he ate nothing during those days, and when they had ended, he was hungry. And the devil said to him, If you are the Son of God, tell this stone to become bread. And Jesus answered him, It is written, Man shall not live on bread alone. And he led him up and showed him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. And the devil said to him, I will give you all this domain and its glory, for it has been handed over to me, and I give it to whomever I want. Therefore if you worship before me, it shall all be yours. Jesus replied to him, It is written, You shall worship the Lord your God and serve him only. And he brought him into Jerusalem and had him stand on the pinnacle of the temple, and said to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down from here. For it is written, He will give his angels orders concerning you, to protect you, eleven and, on their hands they will lift you up, so that you do not strike your foot against a stone. And Jesus answered and said to him, It has been stated, you shall not put the Lord your God to the test. And so when the devil had finished every temptation, he left him until an opportune time. And Jesus returned to Galilee in the power of the Spirit, and news about him spread through all the surrounding region. 
And he began teaching in their synagogues and was praised by all. And he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, and as was his custom, he entered the synagogue on the Sabbath, and stood up to read. And the scroll of Isaiah the prophet was handed to him. And he unrolled the scroll and found the place where it was written. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to captives, and recovery of sight to the blind, to set free those who are oppressed. To proclaim the favorable year of the Lord. And he rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the attendant, and sat down, and the eyes of all the people in the synagogue were intently directed at him. Now he began to say to them, Today this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. And all the people were speaking well of him, and admiring the gracious words which were coming from his lips, and yet they were saying, Is this not Joseph's son? And he said to them, No doubt you will quote this proverb to me, Physician, heal yourself. All the miracles that we heard were done in Capernaum, do here in your hometown as well. But he said, Truly I say to you, no prophet is welcome in his hometown. But I say to you in truth, there were many widows in Israel in the days of Elijah, when the sky was shut up for three years and six months, when a severe famine came over all the land. And yet Elijah was sent to none of them, but only to Zarephath, in the land of Sidon, to a woman who was a widow. And there were many with leprosy in Israel in the time of Elisha the prophet, and none of them was cleansed, but only Naaman the Syrian. And all the people in the synagogue were filled with rage as they heard these things. And they got up and drove him out of the city, and brought him to the crest of the hill on which their city had been built, so that they could throw him down from the cliff. But he passed through their midst and went on his way. And he came down to Capernaum, a city of Galilee, and he was teaching them on the Sabbath, thirty-two and they were amazed at his teaching, because his message was delivered with authority. Thirty-three inches the synagogue there was a man possessed by the spirit of an unclean demon, and he cried out with a loud voice. Leave us alone. What business do you have with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be quiet and come out of him. And when the demon had thrown him down in the midst of the people, it came out of him without doing him any harm. And amazement came upon them all, and they began talking with one another, saying, What is this message? For with authority and power he commands the unclean spirits, and they come out. And the news about him was spreading into every locality of the surrounding region. Then he got up and left the synagogue, and entered Simon's home. Now Simon's mother-in-law was suffering from a high fever, and they asked him to help her. And standing over her, he rebuked the fever, and it left her and she immediately got up and served them. Now while the sun was setting, all those who had any who were sick with various diseases brought them to him, and he was laying his hands on each one of them and healing them. Forty-one demons also were coming out of many, shouting, You are the Son of God. And yet he was rebuking them and would not allow them to speak, because they knew that he was the Christ. Now when day came, Jesus left and went to a secluded place, and the crowds were searching for him, and they came to him and tried to keep him from leaving them. But he said to them, I must also preach the kingdom of God to the other cities, because I was sent for this purpose. So he kept on preaching in the synagogues of Judea. Now it happened that while the crowd was pressing around him and listening to the word of God, he was standing by the lake of Genesaret. And he saw two boats lying at the edge of the lake, but the fishermen had gotten out of them and were washing their nets. 
And he got into one of the boats, which was Simon's, and asked him to put out a little distance from the land. And he sat down and continued teaching the crowds from the boat. Now when he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, Put out into the deep water and let down your nets for a catch. Simon responded and said, Master, we worked hard all night and caught nothing, but I will do as you say and let down the nets. And when they had done this, they caught a great quantity of fish, and their nets began to tear. So they signaled to their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both of the boats, to the point that they were sinking. But when Simon Peter saw this, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Go away from me, Lord, for I am a sinful man. For amazement had seized him and all his companions because of the catch of fish which they had taken. And likewise also were James and John, sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. And Jesus said to Simon, Do not fear, from now on you will be catching people. When they had brought their boats to land, they left everything and followed him. While he was in one of the cities, behold, there was a man covered with leprosy, and when he saw Jesus, he fell on his face and begged him, saying, Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. And he reached out with his hand and touched him, saying, I am willing, be cleansed. And immediately the leprosy left him. And he ordered him to tell no one, saying, But go and show yourself to the priest, and make an offering for your cleansing, just as Moses commanded, as a testimony to them. But the news about him was spreading even farther, and large crowds were gathering to hear him and to be healed of their sicknesses. But Jesus himself would often slip away to the wilderness and pray. One day he was teaching, and there were some Pharisees and teachers of the law sitting there who had come from every village of Galilee and Judea, and from Jerusalem and the power of the Lord was present for him to perform healing. And some men were carrying a man on a stretcher who was paralyzed, and they were trying to bring him in and to set him down in front of him. But when they did not find any way to bring him in because of the crowd, they went up on the roof and let him down through the tiles with his stretcher, into the middle of the crowd, in front of Jesus. And seeing their faith, he said, Friend, your sins are forgiven you. The scribes and the Pharisees began thinking of the implications, saying, Who is this man who speaks blasphemies? Who can forgive sins, except God alone? But Jesus, aware of their thoughts, responded and said to them, Why are you thinking this way in your hearts? Which is easier, to say, Your sins are forgiven you, or to say, Get up and walk. But so that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins, he said to the man who was paralyzed, I say to you, Get up, and pick up your stretcher, and go home. And immediately he got up before them, and picked up what he had been lying on, and went home glorifying God. And they were all struck with astonishment and began glorifying God. They were also filled with fear, saying, We have seen remarkable things today. After that he went out and looked at a tax collector named Levi sitting in the tax office, and he said to him, Follow me. And he left everything behind, and got up and began following him. And Levi gave a big reception for him in his house, and there was a large crowd of tax collectors and other people who were reclining at the table with them. The Pharisees and their scribes began grumbling to his disciples, saying, Why do you eat and drink with the tax collectors and sinners? And Jesus answered and said to them, It is not those who are healthy who need a physician, but those who are sick. I have not come to call the righteous to repentance, but sinners. And they said to him, 
the disciples of John often fast and offer prayers, the disciples of the Pharisees also do the same, but yours eat and drink. And Jesus said to them, You cannot make the attendants of the groom fast while the groom is with them, can you? But the days will come, and when the groom is taken away from them, then they will fast in those days. And he was also telling them a parable, No one tears a piece of cloth from a new garment and puts it on an old garment, otherwise he will both tear the new, and the patch from the new garment will not match the old. And no one pours new wine into old wineskins, otherwise the new wine will burst the skins and it will be spilled out, and the skins will be ruined. But new wine must be put into fresh wineskins. And no one, after drinking old wine wants new, for he says, the old is fine. Now it happened that Jesus was passing through some grain fields on a Sabbath, and his disciples were picking the heads of grain, rubbing them in their hands, and eating them. But some of the Pharisees said, Why are you doing what is not lawful on the Sabbath? And Jesus, answering them, said, Have you not even read what David did when he was hungry, he and those who were with him? How he entered the house of God, and took and ate the consecrated bread, which is not lawful for anyone to eat except the priests alone, and gave it to his companions. And he was saying to them, The Son of Man is Lord of the Sabbath. On another Sabbath he entered the synagogue and taught, and a man was there whose right hand was withered. Now the scribes and the Pharisees were watching him closely to see if he healed on the Sabbath, so that they might find a reason to accuse him. But he knew what they were thinking, and he said to the man with the withered hand, Get up and come forward. And he got up and came forward. And Jesus said to them, I ask you whether it is lawful to do good on the Sabbath or to do harm, to save a life or to destroy it. And after looking around at them all, he said to him, Stretch out your hand. And he did so, and his hand was restored. But they themselves were filled with senseless rage, and began discussing together what they might do to Jesus. Now it was at this time that he went off to the mountain to pray, and he spent the whole night in prayer with God. And when day came, he called his disciples to him and chose twelve of them, whom he also named as apostles. Simon, whom he also named Peter, and his brother Andrew, and James and John, and Philip and Bartholomew. And Matthew and Thomas, James the son of Alphaeus, and Simon who was called the Zealot. Judas the son of James, and Judas Iscariot, who became a traitor. And then Jesus came down with them and stood on a level place, and there was a large crowd of his disciples, and a great multitude of the people from all Judea and Jerusalem, and the coastal region of Tyre and Sidon, who had come to hear him and to be healed of their diseases, and those who were troubled by unclean spirits were being cured. And all the people were trying to touch him, because power was coming from him and healing them all. And he raised his eyes toward his disciples and began saying, Blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who are hungry now, for you will be satisfied. Blessed are you who weep now, for you will laugh. Blessed are you when the people hate you, and when they exclude you, and insult you, and scorn your name as evil, on account of the Son of Man. Rejoice on that day and jump for joy, for behold, your reward is great in heaven. For their fathers used to treat the prophets the same way. But woe to you who are rich, for you are receiving your comfort in full. Woe to you who are well fed now, for you will be hungry. Woe to you who laugh now, for you will mourn and weep. Woe to you when all the people speak well of you, for their fathers used to treat the false prophets the same way. But I say to you who hear, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you. 
Bless those who curse you, pray for those who are abusive to you. Whoever hits you on the cheek, offer him the other also, and whoever takes away your cloak, do not withhold your tunic from him either. 30 Give to everyone who asks of you, and whoever takes away what is yours, do not demand it back. Treat people the same way you want them to treat you. If you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners love those who love them. And if you do good to those who do good to you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners do the same. And if you lend to those from whom you expect to receive, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to sinners in order to receive back the same amount. But love your enemies and do good, and lend, expecting nothing in return, and your reward will be great, and you will be sons of the Most High, for He Himself is kind to ungrateful and evil people. Be merciful, just as your Father is merciful. Do not judge, and you will not be judged, and do not condemn, and you will not be condemned, pardon, and you will be pardoned. Give, and it will be given to you. They will pour into your lap a good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. For by your standard of measure it will be measured to you in return. Now he also spoke a parable to them, a person who is blind cannot guide another who is blind, can he? Will they not both fall into a pit? A student is not above the teacher, but everyone, when he has been fully trained, will be like his teacher. Why do you look at the speck that is in your brother's eye, but do not notice the log that is in your own eye? How can you say to your brother, Brother, let me take out the speck that is in your eye, when you yourself do not see the log that is in your own eye? You hypocrite, first take the log out of your own eye, and then you will see clearly to take out the speck that is in your brother's eye. For there is no good tree that bears bad fruit, nor, on the other hand, a bad tree that bears good fruit. For each tree is known by its own fruit. For people do not gather figs from thorns, nor do they pick grapes from a briar bush. The good person out of the good treasure of his heart brings forth what is good, and the evil person out of the evil treasure brings forth what is evil, for his mouth speaks from that which fills his heart. Now why do you call me, Lord, Lord, and do not do what I say? Everyone who comes to me and hears my words and acts on them, I will show you whom he is like. He is like a man building a house, who dug deep and laid a foundation on the rock, and when there was a flood, the river burst against that house and yet it could not shake it, because it had been well built. But the one who has heard and has not acted accordingly is like a man who built a house on the ground without a foundation, and the river burst against it and it immediately collapsed, and the ruin of that house was great. When he had completed all his teaching in the hearing of the people, he went to Capernaum. Now a centurion slave, who was highly regarded by him, was sick and about to die. When he heard about Jesus, he sent some Jewish elders to him, asking him to come and save the life of his slave. When they came to Jesus, they strongly urged him, saying, He is worthy for you to grant this to him. For he loves our nation, and it was he who built us our synagogue. Now Jesus started on his way with them, but already, when he was not yet far from the house, the centurion sent friends, saying to him, Lord, do not trouble yourself further, for I am not worthy for you to enter under my roof. For that reason I did not even consider myself worthy to come to you, but just say the word, and my servant shall be healed. For I also am a man placed under authority, with soldiers under myself, and I say to this one, Go, and he goes, and to another, Come, and he comes, and to my slave, Do this, and he does it. Now when Jesus heard this, he was amazed at him, and turned and said to the crowd that was following him, I say to you, 
not even in Israel have I found such great faith. And when those who had been sent returned to the house, they found the slave in good health. Soon afterward Jesus went to a city called Nain, and his disciples were going along with him, accompanied by a large crowd. Now as he approached the gate of the city, a dead man was being carried out, the only son of his mother, and she was a widow, and a sizable crowd from the city was with her. When the Lord saw her, he felt compassion for her and said to her, Do not go on weeping. And he came up and touched the coffin, and the bearers came to a halt. And he said, Young man, I say to you, Arise. And the dead man sat up and began to speak. And Jesus gave him back to his mother. Fear gripped them all, and they began glorifying God, saying, A great prophet has appeared among us, and, God has visited his people. And this report about him spread throughout Judea and in all the surrounding region. The disciples of John also reported to him about all these things. And after summoning two of his disciples, John sent them to the Lord, saying, Are you the coming one, or are we to look for another? When the men came to him, they said, John the Baptist has sent us to you, to ask, Are you the coming one, or are we to look for another? At that very time he cured many people of diseases and afflictions and evil spirits, and he gave sight to many who were blind. And he answered and said to them, Go and report to John what you have seen and heard, people who were blind receive sight, people who limped walk, people with leprosy are cleansed and people who were deaf hear, dead people are raised up, and people who are poor have the gospel preached to them. And blessed is anyone who does not take offense at me. When the messengers of John had left, he began to speak to the crowds about John, what did you go out into the wilderness to see? A reed shaken by the wind? But what did you go out to see? A man dressed in soft clothing? Those who are splendidly clothed and live in luxury are found in royal palaces. But what did you go out to see? A prophet? Yes, I tell you, and one who is more than a prophet. This is the one about whom it is written, Behold, I am sending my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way before you. I say to you, among those born of women there is no one greater than John, yet the one who is least in the kingdom of God is greater than he. When all the people and the tax collectors heard this, they acknowledged God's justice, having been baptized with the baptism of John. But the Pharisees and the lawyers rejected God's purpose for themselves, not having been baptized by John. To what then shall I compare the people of this generation, and what are they like? They are like children who sit in the marketplace and call to one another, and say, We played the flute for you, and you did not dance, we sang a song of mourning, and you did not weep. For John the Baptist has come neither eating bread nor drinking wine, and you say, he has a demon. The Son of Man has come eating and drinking, and you say, behold, a gluttonous man and a heavy drinker, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. And yet wisdom is vindicated by all her children. Now one of the Pharisees was requesting him to eat with him, and he entered the Pharisee's house and reclined at the table. And there was a woman in the city who was a sinner, and when she learned that he was reclining at the table in the Pharisee's house, she brought an alabaster vial of perfume. And standing behind him at his feet, weeping, she began to wet his feet with her tears, and she wiped them with the hair of her head, and began kissing his feet and anointing them with the perfume. Now when the Pharisee who had invited him saw this, he said to himself, If this man were a prophet he would know who and what sort of person this woman is who is touching him, that she is a sinner. And Jesus responded and said to him, Simon, I have something to say to you. And he replied, 
Say it, teacher. A moneylender had two debtors, the one owed 500 denarii, and the other, 50. When they were unable to repay, he cancelled the debts of both. So which of them will love him more? Simon answered and said, I assume the one for whom he cancelled the greater debt. And he said to him, You have judged correctly. And turning toward the woman, he said to Simon, Do you see this woman? I entered your house, you gave me no water for my feet, but she has wet my feet with her tears and wiped them with her hair. You gave me no kiss, but she has not stopped kissing my feet since the time I came in. You did not anoint my head with oil, but she anointed my feet with perfume. For this reason I say to you, her sins, which are many, have been forgiven, for she loved much, but the one who is forgiven little, loves little. And he said to her, Your sins have been forgiven. And then those who were reclining at the table with him began saying to themselves, Who is this man who even forgives sins? And he said to the woman, Your faith has saved you, go in peace. Soon afterward, Jesus began going around from one city and village to another, proclaiming and preaching the kingdom of God. The twelve were with him and also some women who had been healed of evil spirits and sicknesses, Mary who was called Magdalene, from whom seven demons had gone out, and Joanna the wife of Chusa, Herod steward, and Susanna, and many others who were contributing to their support out of their private means. Now when a large crowd was coming together, and those from the various cities were journeying to him, he spoke by way of a parable. The sower went out to sow his seed, and as he sowed, some fell beside the road, and it was trampled underfoot, and the birds of the sky ate it up. Other seed fell on rocky soil, and when it came up, it withered away because it had no moisture. Seven other seed fell among the thorns, and the thorns grew up with it and choked it out. And yet other seed fell into the good soil, and grew up, and produced a crop a hundred times as much. As he said these things, he would call out, The one who has ears to hear, let him hear. Now his disciples began asking him what this parable meant. And he said, To you it has been granted to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God, but to the rest they are told in parables, so that while seeing they may not see, and while hearing they may not understand. Now this is the parable, the seed is the word of God. And those beside the road are the ones who have heard, then the devil comes and takes away the word from their heart, so that they will not believe and be saved. Those on the rocky soil are the ones who, when they hear, receive the word with joy, and yet these do not have a firm root, they believe for a while, and in a time of temptation they fall away. And the seed which fell among the thorns, these are the ones who have heard, and as they go on their way they are choked by worries, riches, and pleasures of this life, and they bring no fruit to maturity. But the seed in the good soil, these are the ones who have heard the word with a good and virtuous heart, and hold it firmly, and produce fruit with perseverance. Now no one lights a lamp and covers it over with a container, or puts it under a bed, but he puts it on a lampstand so that those who come in may see the light. For nothing is concealed that will not become evident, nor anything hidden that will not be known and come to light. So take care how you listen, for whoever has, to him more will be given, and whoever does not have, even what he thinks he has will be taken away from him. Now his mother and brothers came to him, and they were unable to get to him because of the crowd. And it was reported to him, Your mother and your brothers are standing outside, wishing to see you. But he answered and said to them, My mother and my brothers are these who hear the word of God and do it. Now on one of those days Jesus and his disciples got into a boat, and he said to them, Let's cross over to the other side of the lake. 
So they launched out. But as they were sailing along he fell asleep, and a fierce gale of wind descended on the lake, and they began to be swamped and to be in danger. They came up to Jesus and woke him, saying, Master, Master, we are perishing. And he got up and rebuked the wind and the surging waves, and they stopped, and it became calm. And he said to them, Where is your faith? But they were fearful and amazed, saying to one another, Who then is this, that he commands even the winds and the water, and they obey him? Then they sailed to the country of the Gerasenes, which is opposite Galilee. And when he stepped out onto the land, a man from the city met him who was possessed with demons, and he had not put on clothing for a long time and was not living in a house, but among the tombs. And seeing Jesus, he cried out and fell down before him, and said with a loud voice, What business do you have with me, Jesus, Son of the Most High God? I beg you, do not torment me. 29 For he had already commanded the unclean spirit to come out of the man. For it had seized him many times, and he was bound with chains and shackles and kept under guard, and yet he would break the restraints and be driven by the demon into the desert. And Jesus asked him, What is your name? And he said, Legion, because many demons had entered him. And they were begging him not to command them to go away into the abyss. Now there was a herd of many pigs feeding there on the mountain, and the demons begged him to permit them to enter the pigs. And he gave them permission. And the demons came out of the man and entered the pigs, and the herd rushed down the steep bank into the lake and was drowned. Now when the herdsmen saw what had happened, they ran away and reported everything in the city, and in the country. And the people came out to see what had happened, and they came to Jesus and found the man from whom the demons had gone out, sitting down at the feet of Jesus, clothed and in his right mind, and they became frightened. Those who had seen everything reported to them how the man who had been demon-possessed had been made well. And all the people of the territory of the Gerasenes and the surrounding region asked him to leave them, because they were overwhelmed by great fear, and he got into a boat and returned. 38 But the man from whom the demons had gone out was begging him that he might accompany him, but Jesus sent him away, saying, Return to your home and describe what great things God has done for you. So he went away, proclaiming throughout the city what great things Jesus had done for him. And as Jesus was returning, the people welcomed him, for they had all been waiting for him. 41 And a man named Jairus came, and he was an official of the synagogue, and he fell at Jesus' feet, and began urging him to come to his house. For he had an only daughter, about twelve years old, and she was dying. But as he went, the crowds were pressing against him. And a woman who had suffered a chronic flow of blood for twelve years, and could not be healed by anyone, came up behind him and touched the fringe of his cloak, and immediately her bleeding stopped. And Jesus said, Who is the one who touched me? And while they were all denying it, Peter said, Master, the people are crowding and pressing in on you. But Jesus said, Someone did touch me, for I was aware that power had left me. Now when the woman saw that she had not escaped notice, she came trembling and fell down before him, and admitted in the presence of all the people the reason why she had touched him, and how she had been immediately healed. And he said to her, Daughter, your faith has made you well, go in peace. While he was still speaking, someone asterisk came from the house of the synagogue official, saying, Your daughter has died, do not trouble the teacher any more. But when Jesus heard this, he responded to him, Do not be afraid any longer, only believe, and she will be made well. When he came to the house, he did not allow anyone to enter with him except Peter, John, and James, 
and the girl's father and mother. Now they were all weeping and mourning for her, but he said, Stop weeping, for she has not died, but is asleep. And they began laughing at him, knowing that she had died. He, however, took her by the hand and spoke forcefully, saying, Child, arise. And her spirit returned, and she got up immediately, and he ordered that something be given her to eat. Her parents were amazed, but he instructed them to tell no one what had happened. Now he called the twelve together and gave them power and authority over all the demons, and the power to heal diseases. And he sent them out to proclaim the kingdom of God and to perform healing. And he said to them, Take nothing for your journey, neither a staff, nor a bag, nor bread, nor money, and do not even have two tunics. And whatever house you enter, stay there until you leave that city. And as for all who do not receive you, when you leave that city, shake the dust off your feet as a testimony against them. And as they were leaving, they began going throughout the villages, preaching the gospel and healing everywhere. Now Herod the Tetrarch heard about all that was happening, and he was greatly perplexed, because it was said by some that John had risen from the dead, and by some that Elijah had appeared, and by others that one of the prophets of old had risen. Herod said, I myself had John beheaded, but who is this man about whom I hear such things? And he kept trying to see him. When the apostles returned, they gave an account to him of all that they had done. And taking them with him, he withdrew privately to a city called Bethsaida. But the crowds were aware of this and followed him, and he welcomed them and began speaking to them about the kingdom of God, and curing those who had need of healing. Now the day was ending, and the twelve came up and said to him, Dismiss the crowd, so that they may go into the surrounding villages and countryside and find lodging and get something to eat, because here, we are in a secluded place. But he said to them, You give them something to eat. But they said, We have no more than five loaves and two fish, unless perhaps we go and buy food for all these people. For there were about five thousand men. But he said to his disciples, have them recline to eat in groups of about fifty each. They did so, and had them all recline. And he took the five loaves and the two fish, and, looking up to heaven, he blessed them and broke them, and gave them to the disciples again and again, to serve the crowd. And they all ate and were satisfied, and the broken pieces which they had left over were picked up, twelve baskets full. And it happened that while he was praying alone, the disciples were with him, and he questioned them, saying, Who do the people say that I am? They answered and said, John the Baptist, and others say Elijah, but others, that one of the prophets of old has risen. And he said to them, But who do you say that I am? And Peter answered and said, The Christ of God. But he warned them and instructed them not to tell this to anyone, saying, The Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders and chief priests and scribes, and be killed and be raised on the third day. And he was saying to them all, If anyone wants to come after me, he must deny himself, take up his cross daily, and follow me. For whoever wants to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake, this is the one who will save it. For what good does it do a person if he gains the whole world, but loses or forfeits himself? For whoever is ashamed of me and my words, the Son of Man will be ashamed of him when he comes in his glory and the glory of the Father and the holy angels. But I say to you truthfully, there are some of those standing here who will not taste death until they see the kingdom of God. About eight days after these sayings, he took along Peter, John, and James, and went up on the mountain to pray. And while he was praying, 
the appearance of his face became different, and his clothing became white and gleaming. And behold, two men were talking with him, and they were Moses and Elijah, who, appearing in glory, were speaking of his departure, which he was about to accomplish at Jerusalem. Now Peter and his companions had been overcome with sleep, but when they were fully awake, they saw his glory and the two men who were standing with him. And as these two men were leaving him, Peter said to Jesus, Master, it is good that we are here, and let's make three tabernacles, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah, not realizing what he was saying. But while he was saying this, a cloud formed and began to overshadow them, and they were afraid as they entered the cloud. And then a voice came from the cloud, saying, This is my son, my chosen one, listen to him. And when the voice had spoken, Jesus was found alone. And they kept silent, and reported to no one in those days any of the things which they had seen. On the next day, when they came down from the mountain, a large crowd met him. And a man from the crowd shouted, saying, Teacher, I beg you to look at my son, because he is my only son. And a spirit seizes him and he suddenly screams, and it throws him into a convulsion with foaming at the mouth, and only with difficulty does it leave him, mauling him as it leaves. And I begged your disciples to cast it out, and they could not. And Jesus answered and said, You unbelieving and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you and put up with you? Bring your son here. Now while he was still approaching, the demon slammed him to the ground and threw him into a convulsion. But Jesus rebuked the unclean spirit, and healed the boy and gave him back to his father. And they were all amazed at the greatness of God. But while everyone was astonished at all that he was doing, he said to his disciples, As for you, let these words sink into your ears, for the Son of Man is going to be handed over to men. But they did not understand this statement, and it was concealed from them so that they would not comprehend it, and they were afraid to ask him about this statement. Now an argument started among them as to which of them might be the greatest. But Jesus, knowing what they were thinking in their hearts, took a child and had him stand by his side. And he said to them, Whoever receives this child in my name receives me, and whoever receives me receives him who sent me, for the one who is least among all of you, this is the one who is great. John answered and said, Master, we saw someone casting out demons in your name, and we tried to prevent him because he does not follow along with us. But Jesus said to him, Do not hinder him, for the one who is not against you is for you. When the days were approaching for his ascension, he was determined to go to Jerusalem, 52 and he sent messengers on ahead of him, and they went and entered a village of the Samaritans to make arrangements for him. And they did not receive him, because he was traveling toward Jerusalem. When his disciples James and John saw this, they said, Lord, do you want us to command fire to come down from heaven and consume them? But he turned and rebuked them. And they went on to another village. As they were going on the road, someone said to him, I will follow you wherever you go. 58 And Jesus said to him, The foxes have holes and the birds of the sky have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. And he said to another, Follow me, but he said, Lord, permit me first to go and bury my father. But he said to him, Allow the dead to bury their own dead, but as for you, go and proclaim everywhere the kingdom of God. Another also said, I will follow you, Lord, but first permit me to say goodbye to those at my home. But Jesus said to him, No one, after putting his hand to the plow and looking back, is fit for the kingdom of God. Now after this the Lord appointed seventy-two others, 
and sent them in pairs ahead of him to every city and place where he himself was going to come. And he was saying to them, The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few, therefore plead with the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Go, behold, I am sending you out like lambs in the midst of wolves. Carry no money belt, no bag, no sandals, and greet no one along the way. And whatever house you enter, first say, Peace be to this house. And if Ammon of peace is there, your peace will rest upon him, but if not, it will return to you. Stay in that house, eating and drinking what they provide, for the laborer is deserving of his wages. Do not move from house to house. Whatever city you enter and they receive you, eat what is served to you. And heal those in it who are sick, and say to them, The kingdom of God has come near to you. But whatever city you enter and they do not receive you, go out into its streets and say, Even the dust of your city which clings to our feet we wipe off in protest against you, yet be sure of this, that the kingdom of God has come near. I say to you, it will be more tolerable on that day for Sodom than for that city. Woe to you, Chorazin! Woe to you, Bethsaida! For if the miracles that occurred in you had occurred in Tyre and Sidon, they would have repented long ago, sitting in sackcloth and ashes. 14 But it will be more tolerable for Tyre and Sidon in the judgment than for you. And you, Capernaum, will not be exalted to heaven, will you? You will be brought down to Hades. The one who listens to you listens to me, and the one who rejects you rejects me, but the one who rejects me rejects the one who sent me. Now the seventy-two returned with joy, saying, Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name. And he said to them, I watched Satan fall from heaven like lightning. Behold, I have given you authority to walk on snakes and scorpions, and authority over all the power of the enemy, and nothing will injure you. Nevertheless, do not rejoice in this, that the spirits are subject to you, but rejoice that your names are recorded in heaven. At that very time he rejoiced greatly in the Holy Spirit, and said, I praise you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have hidden these things from the wise and intelligent and have revealed them to infants. Yes, Father, for doing so was well pleasing in your sight. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows who the Son is except the Father, and who the Father is except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son determines to reveal him. Turning to the disciples, he said privately, Blessed are the eyes that see the things you see, 24 For I tell you that many prophets and kings wanted to see the things that you see, and did not see them, and to hear the things that you hear, and did not hear them. And behold, a lawyer stood up and put him to the test, saying, Teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? And he said to him, What is written in the law, how does it read to you? And he answered, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your strength, and with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. And he said to him, You have answered correctly, do this and you will live. But wanting to justify himself, he said to Jesus, And who is my neighbor? Jesus replied and said, A man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho, and he encountered robbers, and they stripped him and beat him, and went away leaving him half dead. 31 And by coincidence a priest was going down on that road, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. Likewise a Levite also, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan who was on a journey came upon him, and when he saw him, he felt compassion and came to him and bandaged up his wounds, pouring oil and wine on them, and he put him on his own animal, 
and brought him to an inn and took care of him. On the next day he took out two denarii and gave them to the innkeeper and said, Take care of him, and whatever more you spend, when I return, I will repay you. Which of these three do you think proved to be a neighbor to the man who fell into the robber's hands? And he said, The one who showed compassion to him. Then Jesus said to him, Go and doth same. Now as they were traveling along, he entered a village, and a woman named Martha welcomed him into her home. And she had a sister called Mary, who was also seated at the Lord's feet, and was listening to his word. But Martha was distracted with all her preparations, and she came up to him and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to do the serving by myself? Then tell her to help me. But the Lord answered and said to her, Martha, Martha, you are worried and distracted by many things. But only one thing is necessary, for Mary has chosen the good part, which shall not be taken away from her. It happened that while Jesus was praying in a certain place, when he had finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray, just as John also taught his disciples. And he said to them, When you pray, say, Father, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Three give us each day our daily bread. And forgive us our sins, for we ourselves also forgive everyone who is indebted to us. And do not lead us into temptation. And he said to them, Suppose one of you has a friend, and goes to him at midnight and says to him, Friend, lend me three loaves. Because a friend of mine has come to me from a journey and I have nothing to serve him. And from inside he answers and says, Do not bother me, the door has already been shut and my children and I are in bed, I cannot get up and give you anything. I tell you, even if he will not get up and give him anything just because he is his friend, yet because of his shamelessness he will get up and give him as much as he needs. So I say to you, ask, and it will be given to you, seek, and you will find, knock, and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, and the one who seeks finds, and to the one who knocks, it will be opened. Now which one of you fathers will his son ask for a fish, and instead of a fish, he will give him a snake? Or he will even ask for an egg, and his father will give him a scorpion? So if you, despite being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? And he was casting out a mute demon, when the demon had gone out, the man who was previously unable to speak talked, and the crowds were amazed. But some of them said, He casts out the demons by Beelzebul, the ruler of the demons. Others, to test him, were demanding of him a sign from heaven. But he knew their thoughts and said to them, Every kingdom divided against itself is laid waste, and a house divided against itself falls. And if Satan also has been divided against himself, how will his kingdom stand? For you claim that I cast out the demons by Beelzebul. Yet if by Beelzebul I cast out the demons, by whom do your sons cast them out? Therefore, they will be your judges. But if I cast out the demons by the finger of God, then the kingdom of God has come upon you. When as strong man, fully armed, guards his own house, his possessions are secure. But when someone stronger than he attacks him and overpowers him, that man takes away his armor on which he had relied and distributes his plunder. The one who is not with me is against me, and the one who does not gather with me scatters. When the unclean spirit comes out of a person, it passes through waterless places seeking rest, and not finding any, it then says, I will return to my house from which I came. And when it comes, it finds it swept and put in order. Then it goes and brings along seven other spirits more evil than itself, 
and they come in and live there, and the last condition of that person becomes worse than the first. While Jesus was saying these things, one of the women in the crowd raised her voice and said to him, Blessed is the womb that carried you, and the breasts at which you nursed. But he said, On the contrary, blessed are those who hear the word of God and follow it. Now as the crowds were increasing, he began to say, This generation is a wicked generation, it demands a sign, and so no sign will be given to it except the sign of Jonah. For just as Jonah became a sign to the Ninevites, so will the Son of Man be to this generation. The Queen of the South will rise up with the men of this generation at the judgment and condemn them, because she came from the ends of the earth to listen to the wisdom of Solomon, and behold, something greater than Solomon is here. The men of Nineveh will stand up with this generation at the judgment and condemn it, because they repented at the preaching of Jonah, and behold, something greater than Jonah is here. No one lights a lamp and puts it away in a cellar nor under a basket, but on the lampstand, so that those who enter may see the light. Your eye is the lamp of your body, when your eye is clear, your whole body also is full of light, but when it is bad, your body also is full of darkness. So watch out that the light in you is not darkness. Therefore if your whole body is full of light, without any dark part, it will be wholly illuminated, as when the lamp illuminates you with its light. Now when he had spoken, a Pharisee asterisk asked him to have lunch with him, and he went in and reclined at the table. When the Pharisee saw this, he was surprised that Jesus had not first ceremonially washed before the meal. But the Lord said to him, Now you Pharisees clean the outside of the cup and of the dish, but your inside is full of greed and wickedness. You foolish ones, did he who made the outside not make the inside also? But give that which is within as a charitable gift, and then all things are clean for you. But woe to you Pharisees! For you pay tithes of mint, rue, and every kind of garden herb, and yet you ignore justice and the love of God, but these are the things you should have done without neglecting the others. Woe to you Pharisees! For you love the seat of honor in the synagogues and personal greetings in the marketplaces. Woe to you! For you are like unseen tombs, and the people who walk over them are unaware of it. One of the lawyer's asterisks said to him in reply, Teacher, when you say these things, you insult us too. 46 But he said, Woe to you lawyers as well. For you load people with burdens that are hard to bear, while you yourselves will not even touch the burdens with one of your fingers. Woe to you! For you build the tombs of the prophets, and it was your fathers who killed them. So you are witnesses and you approve of the deeds of your fathers, because it was they who killed them, and you build their tombs. For this reason also, the wisdom of God said, I will send them prophets and apostles, and some of them they will kill, and some they will persecute. So that the blood of all the prophets, shed since the foundation of the world, may be charged against this generation. From the blood of Abel to the blood of Zechariah, who was killed between the altar and the house of God, yes, I tell you, it shall be charged against this generation. Woe to you lawyers! For you have taken away the key of knowledge, you yourselves did not enter, and you hindered those who were entering. When he left that place, the scribes and the Pharisees began to be very hostile and to interrogate him about many subjects, plotting against him to catch him in something he might say. Under these circumstances, after so many thousands of people had gathered together that they were stepping on one another, he began saying to his disciples first of all, Beware of the leaven of the Pharisees, which is hypocrisy. But there is nothing covered up that will not be revealed, and hidden that will not be known. Accordingly, 
Whatever you have said in the dark will be heard in the light, and what you have whispered in the inner rooms will be proclaimed on the housetops. Now I say to you, my friends, do not be afraid of those who kill the body, and after that have nothing more that they can do. But I will warn you whom to fear, fear the one who, after he has killed someone, has the power to throw that person into hell, yes, I tell you, fear him. Are five sparrows not sold for Twasaria? And yet not one of them has gone unnoticed in the sight of God. But even the hairs of your head are all counted. Do not fear, you are more valuable than a great number of sparrows. Now I say to you, everyone who confesses me before people, the Son of Man will also confess him before the angels of God. But the one who denies me before people will be denied before the angels of God. And everyone who speaks a word against the Son of Man, it will be forgiven him, but the one who blasphemes against the Holy Spirit, it will not be forgiven him. Now when they bring you before the synagogues and the officials and the authorities, do not worry about how or what you are to speak in your defense, or what you are to say. For the Holy Spirit will teach you in that very hour what you ought to say. Now someone in the crowd said to him, Teacher, tell my brother to divide the family inheritance with me. But he said to him, You there, who appointed me a judge or arbitrator over the two of you? But he said to them, Beware, and be on your guard against every form of greed, for not even when one is affluent does his life consist of his possessions. And he told them a parable, saying, The land of a rich man was very productive. And he began thinking to himself, saying, What shall I do, since I have no place to store my crops? And he said, This is what I will do, I will tear down my barns and build larger ones, and I will store all my grain and my goods there. And I will say Tommy Self, you have many goods stored up for many years to come, relax, eat, drink, and enjoy yourself. But God said to him, You fool! This very night your soul is demanded of you, and as for all that you have prepared, who will own it now? Such is the one who stores up treasure for himself, and is not rich in relation to God. And he said to his disciples, For this reason I tell you do not worry about your life, as to what you are to eat, nor for your body, as to what you are to wear. For life is more than food, and the body is more than clothing. Consider the ravens, that they neither sow nor reap, they have no storeroom nor barn, and yet God feeds them, how much more valuable you are than the birds. And which of you by worrying can add a day to his life span? Therefore if you cannot do even a very little thing, why do you worry about the other things? Consider the lilies, how they grow, they neither labor nor spin, but I tell you, not even Solomon in all his glory clothed himself like one of these. Now if God so clothes the grass in the field, which is alive today and tomorrow is thrown into the furnace, how much more will he clothe you? You of little faith! And do not seek what you are to eat and what you are to drink, and do not keep worrying. For all these things are what the nations of the world eagerly seek, and your Father knows that you need these things. But seek his kingdom and these things will be provided to you. Do not be afraid, little flock, because your Father has chosen to give you the kingdom. Sell your possessions and give to charity, make yourselves money belts that do not wear out, an inexhaustible treasure in heaven, where no thief comes near nor does a moth destroy. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Be prepared, and keep your lamps lit. You are also to be like people who are waiting for their master when he returns from the wedding feast, so that they may immediately open the door for him when he comes and knocks. Blessed are those slaves whom the master will find on the alert when he comes, truly I say to you, 
that he will prepare himself to serve, and have them recline at the table, and he will come up and serve them. Whether he comes in the second watch, or even in the third, and finds them so, blessed are those slaves. But be sure of this, that if the head of the house had known at what hour the thief was coming, he would not have allowed his house to be broken into. You too, be ready, because the Son of Man is coming at an hour that you do not think he will. Peter said, Lord, are you telling this parable to us, or to everyone else as well? And the Lord said, Who then is the faithful and sensible steward, whom his master will put in charge of his servants, to give them their rations at the proper time? Blessed is that slave whom his master finds so doing when he comes. Truly I say to you that he will put him in charge of all his possessions. But if that slave says in his heart, My master will take a long time to come, and he begins to beat the other slaves, both men and women, and to eat and drink and get drunk. Then the master of that slave will come on a day that he does not expect, and at an hour that he does not know, and will cut him in two, and assign him a place with the unbelievers. And that slave who knew his master's will and did not get ready or act in accordance with his will, will receive many blows. But the one who did not know it, and committed acts deserving oath a beating, will receive only a few blows. From everyone who has been given much, much will be demanded, and to whom they entrusted much, of him they will ask all the more. I have come to cast fire upon the earth, and how I wish it were already kindled. But I have a baptism to undergo, and how distressed I am until it is accomplished. Do you think that I came to provide peace on earth? No, I tell you, but rather division. For from now on five members in one household will be divided, three against two and two against three. They will be divided, father against son and son against father, mother against daughter and daughter against mother, mother-in-law against daughter-in-law and daughter-in-law against mother-in-law. And he was also saying to the crowds, Whenever you see a cloud resinge in the west, you immediately say, A shower is coming, and so it turns out. And whenever you feel a south wind blowing, you say, It will be a hot day, and it turns out that way. You hypocrites! You know how to analyze the appearance of the earth and the sky, but how is it that you do not know how to analyze this present time? And why do you not even judge by yourselves what is right? For when you are going with your accuser to appear before the magistrate, on the way, make an effort to settle with him, so that he does not drag you before the judge, and the judge hand you over to the officer, and the officer throw you into prison. I tell you, you will not get out of there until you have paid up the very Lasselton. Now on that very occasion there were some present who reported to him about the Galileans whose blood Pilate had mixed with their sacrifices. And Jesus responded and said to them, Do you think that these Galileans were worse sinners than all the other Galileans just because they have suffered this fate? No, I tell you, but unless you repent, you will all likewise perish. Or do you think that those eighteen on whom the tower in Siloam fell and killed them were worse offenders than all the other people who live in Jerusalem? No, I tell you, but unless you repent, you will all likewise perish. And he began telling this parable, A man had a fig tree which had been planted in his vineyard, and he came looking for fruit on it and did not find any. And he said to the vineyard keeper, Look! For three years I have come looking for fruit on this fig tree without finding any. Cut it down. Why does it even use up the ground? But he answered and said to him, Sir, leave it alone for this year too, until I dig around it and put in fertilizer. And if it bears fruit next year, fine, but if not, cut it down. Now Jesus was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath. 
And there was a woman who for eighteen years had had a sickness caused by a spirit, and she was bent over double, and could not straighten up at all. When Jesus saw her, he called her over and said to her, Woman, you are freed from your sickness. And he laid his hands on her, and immediately she stood up straight again, and began glorifying God. But the synagogue leader, indignant because Jesus had healed on the Sabbath, began saying to the crowd in response, There are six days during which work should be done, so come during them and get healed, and not on the Sabbath day. But the Lord answered him and said, You hypocrites, does each of you on the Sabbath not untie his ox or donkey from the stall and lead it away to water it? And this woman, a daughter of Abraham as she is, whom Satan has bound for eighteen long years, should she not have been released from this restraint on the Sabbath day? And as he said this, all his opponents were being humiliated, and the entire crowd was rejoicing over all the glorious things being done by him. So he was saying, What is the kingdom of God like, and to what shall I compare it? It is like a mustard seed, which a man took and threw into his own garden, and it grew and became a tree, and the birds of the sky nested in its branches. And again he said, To what shall I compare the kingdom of God? It is like leaven, which a woman took and hid in three zata of flour until it was all leavened. And he was passing through one city and village after another, teaching, and proceeding on his way to Jerusalem. And someone said to him, Lord, are there just a few who are being saved? And he said to them, Strive to enter through the narrow door, for many, I tell you, will seek to enter and will not be able. Once the head of the house gets up and shuts the door, and you begin standing outside and knocking on the door, saying, Lord, open up to us, and he then will answer and say to you, I do not know where you are from. Then you will begin saying, We ate and drank in your presence, and you taught in our streets. And yet he will say, I do not know where you are from, leave me, all you will doers. In that place there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth when you see Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and all the prophets in the kingdom of God, but yourselves being thrown out. And they will come from east and west, and from north and south, and will recline at the table in the kingdom of God. And behold, some are last who will be first, and some are first who will be last. At that very time some Pharisees approached, saying to him, Go away and leave this place, because Herod wants to kill you. And he said to them, Go and tell that fox, Behold, I am casting out demons and performing healings today and tomorrow, and on the third day I rack my goal. Nevertheless I must go on my journey today and tomorrow and the next day, for it cannot be that a prophet would perish outside Jerusalem. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the city that kills the prophets and stones those who have been sent to her. How often I wanted to gather your children together, just as a hen gathers her young under her wings, and you were unwilling. Behold, your house is left to you desolate, and I say to you, you will not see me until you say, Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. It happened that when he went into the house of one of the leaders of the Pharisees on the Sabbath to eat bread, they were watching him closely. And there in front of him was a man suffering from edema. And Jesus responded and said to the lawyers and Pharisees, Is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath, or not? But they kept silent. And he took hold of him and healed him, and sent him away. And he said to them, which one of you will have a son or an ox fall into a well, and will not immediately pull him out on a Sabbath day? And they could offer no reply to this. Now he began telling a parable to the invited guests when he noticed how they had been picking out the places of honor at the table, saying to them, 
Whenever you are invited by someone to a wedding feast, do not take the place of honor, for someone more distinguished than you may have been invited by him. And the one who invited you both will come and say to you, Give your place to this person, and then in disgrace you will proceed to occupy the last place. But whenever you are invited, go and take the last place, so that when the one who has invited you comes, he will say to you, Friend, move up higher, then you will have honor in the sight of all who are dining at the table with you. For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, and the one who humbles himself will be exalted. Now he also went on to say to the one who had invited him, Whenever you give a luncheon or a dinner, do not invite your friends, your brothers, your relatives, nor wealthy neighbors, otherwise they may also invite you to a meal in return, and that will be your repayment. But whenever you give a banquet, invite people who are poor, who have disabilities, who are limping, and people who are blind. And you will be blessed, since they do not have the means to repay you, for you will be repaid at the resurrection of the righteous. Now when one of those who were reclining at the table with him heard this, he said to him, Blessed is everyone who will eat bread in the kingdom of God. But he said to him, A man was giving a big dinner, and he invited many. And at the dinner hour he sent his slave to tell those who had been invited, Come, because everything is ready now. And yet they all alike began to make excuses. The first one said to him, I purchased a field and I need to go out to look at it, please consider me excused. And another one said, I bought five yoke of oxen, and I am going to try them out, please consider me excused. And another one said, I took a woman as my wife, and for that reason I cannot come. And the slave came back and reported this to his master. Then the head of the household became angry and said to his slave, Go out at once into the streets and lanes of the city and bring in here those who are poor, those with disabilities, those who are blind, and those who are limping. And later the slave said, Master, what you commanded has been done, and still there is room. And the master said to the slave, Go out into the roads and the hedges and press upon them to come in, so that my house will be filled. For I tell you, none of those men who were invited shall taste my dinner. Now large crowds were going along with him, and he turned and said to them, If anyone comes to me and does not hate his own father, mother, wife, children, brothers, sisters, yes, and even his own life, he cannot be my disciple. Whoever does not carry his own cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. For which one of you, when he wants to build a tower, does not first sit down and calculate the cost, to see if he has enough to complete it? Otherwise, when he has laid a foundation and is not able to finish, all who are watching it will begin to ridicule him. Saying, This person began to build, and was not able to finish. Or what king, when he sets out to meet another king in battle, will not first sit down and consider whether he is strong enough with ten thousand men to face the one coming against him with twenty thousand? Otherwise, while the other is still far away, he sends a delegation and requests terms of peace. So then, none of you can be my disciple who does not give up all his own possessions. Therefore, salt is good, but if even salt has become tasteless, with what will it be seasoned? 35 It is useless either for the soil or the manure pile, so it is thrown out. The one who has ears to hear, let him hear. Now all the tax collectors and sinners were coming near Jesus to listen to him. And both the Pharisees and the scribes began to complain, saying, This man receives sinners and eats with them. And so he told them this parable, saying, What man among you, if he has a hundred sheep and has lost one of them, does not leave the other ninety-nine in the open pasture and go after the one that is lost, until he finds it? And when he has found it, 
he puts it on his shoulders, rejoicing. And when he comes home, he calls together his friends and his neighbors, saying to them, Rejoice with me, because I have found my sheep that was lost. I tell you that in the same way, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over ninety-nine righteous people who have no need of repentance. Or what woman, if she has ten silver coins and loses one coin, does not light a lamp and sweep the house and search carefully until she finds it? And when she has found it, she calls together her friends and neighbors, saying, Rejoice with me, because I have found the coin which I had lost. In the same way, I tell you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. And he said, A man had two sons. The younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the share of the estate that is coming to me. And so he divided his wealth between them. And not many days later, the younger son gathered everything together and went on a journey to a distant country, and there he squandered his estate in wild living. Now when he had spent everything, a severe famine occurred in that country, and he began doing without. So he went and hired himself out to one of the citizens of that country, and he sent him into his fields to feed pigs. And he longed to have his fill of the carob pods that the pigs were eating, and no one was giving him anything. But when he came to his senses, he said, How many of my father's hired laborers have more than enough bread, but I am dying here from hunger. I will set out and go to my father, and will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven, and in your sight. I am no longer worthy to be called your son, treat me as one of your hired laborers. So he set out and came to his father. But when he was still a long way off, his father saw him and felt compassion for him, and ran and embraced him and kissed him. And the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in your sight, I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his slaves, Quickly bring out the best robe and put it on him, and put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. And bring the fattened calf, slaughter it, and let's eat and celebrate. For this son of mine was dead and has come to life again, he was lost and has been found. And they began to celebrate. Now his older son was in the field, and when he came and approached the house, he heard music and dancing. And he summoned one of the servants and began inquiring what these things could be. And he said to him, Your brother has come, and your father has slaughtered the fattened calf because he has received him back safe and sound. But he became angry and was not willing to go in, and his father came out and began pleading with him. But he answered and said to his father, Look, for so many years I have been serving you and I have never neglected a command of yours, and yet you never gave me a young goat, so that I might celebrate with my friends. But when this son of yours came, who has devoured your wealth with prostitutes, you slaughtered the fattened calf for him. And he said to him, Son, you have always been with me, and all that is mine is yours. But we had to celebrate and rejoice, because this brother of yours was dead and has begun to live, and was lost and has been found. Now he was also saying to the disciples, There was a rich man who had a manager, and this manager was reported to him as squandering his possessions. And he summoned him and said to him, What is this I hear about you? Give an accounting of your management, for you can no longer be manager. And the manager said to himself, What am I to do, since my master is taking the management away from me? I am not strong enough to dig, I am ashamed to beg. I know what I will do, so that when I am removed from the management people will welcome me into their homes. And he summoned each one of his master's debtors, and he began saying to the first, How much do you owe my master? And he said, a hundred jugs of oil. 
And he said to him, Take your bill, and sit down quickly and write fifty. Then he said to another, And how much do you owe? And he said, A hundred cores of wheat. He asterisk said to him, Take your bill, and write eighty. And his master complimented the unrighteous manager because he had acted shrewdly, for the sons of this age are more shrewd in relation to their own kind than the sons of light. And I say to you, make friends for yourselves by means of the wealth of unrighteousness, so that when it is all gone, they will receive you into the eternal dwellings. The one who is faithful in a very little thing is also faithful in much, and the one who is unrighteous in a very little thing is also unrighteous in much. Therefore if you have not been faithful in the use of unrighteous wealth, who will entrust the true wealth to you? And if you have not been faithful in the use of that which is another's, who will give you that which is your own? No servant can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and wealth. Now the Pharisees, who were lovers of money, were listening to all these things and were ridiculing him. And he said to them, You are the ones who justify yourselves in the sight of people, but God knows your hearts, because that which is highly esteemed among people is detestable in the sight of God. The law and the prophets were proclaimed until John came, since that time the gospel of the kingdom of God has been preached, and everyone is forcing his way into it. But it is easier for heaven and earth to pass away than for one stroke of a letter of the law to fail. Everyone who divorces his wife and marries another commits adultery, and he who marries one who is divorced from a husband commits adultery. Now there was a rich man, and he habitually dressed in purple and fine linen, enjoying himself in splendor every day. And a poor man named Lazarus was laid at his gate, covered with sores. And longing to be fed from the scraps which fell from the rich man's table, not only that, the dogs also were coming and licking his sores. Now it happened that the poor man died and was carried away by the angels to Abraham's arms, and the rich man also died and was buried. And in Hades he raised his eyes, being in torment, and Asterisk saw Abraham far away and Lazarus in his arms. And he cried out and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus, so that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool off my tongue, for I am in agony in this flame. But Abraham said, Child, remember that during your life you received your good things, and likewise Lazarus bad things, but now he is being comforted here, and you are in agony. 26 And besides all this, between us and you a great chasm has been set, so that those who want to go over from here to you will not be able, nor will any people cross over from there to us. 27 And he said, Then I request of you, Father, that you send him to my father's house. For I have five brothers, in order that he may warn them, so that they will not come to this place of torment as well. But Abraham asterisk said, They have Moses and the prophets, let them hear them. But he said, No, Father Abraham, but if someone goes to them from the dead, they will repent. But he said to him, If they do not listen to Moses and the prophets, they will not be persuaded even if someone rises from the dead. Now he said to his disciples, It is inevitable that stumbling blocks come, but woe to one through whom they come. It is better for him if a millstone is hung around his neck and haze thrown into the sea, than that he may cause one of these little ones tosin. Be on your guard. If your brother sins, rebuke him, and if he repents, forgive him. And if he sins against you seven times a day, and returns to you seven times, saying, I repent, you shall forgive him. The apostles said to the Lord, increase our faith. But the Lord said, 
If you had faith the size of a mustard seed, you could say to this mulberry tree, Be uprooted and be planted in the sea, and it would obey you. Now which of you, having a slave plowing or tending sheep, will say to him after he comes in from the field, Come immediately and recline at the table to eat? On the contrary, will he not say to him, Prepare something for me to eat, and properly clothe yourself and serve me while I eat and drink, and afterward you may eat and drink? He does not thank the slave because he did the things which were commanded, does he? So you too, when you do all the things which were commanded you, say, We are unworthy slaves, we have done only that which we ought to have done. While he was on the way to Jerusalem, he was passing between Samaria and Galilee. And as he entered a village, ten men with leprosy who stood at a distance met him. And they raised their voices, saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. When he saw them, he said to them, Go and show yourselves to the priests. And as they were going, they were cleansed. Now one of them, when he saw that he had been healed, turned back, glorifying God with a loud voice. And he fell on his face at his feet, giving thanks to him. And he was a Samaritan. But Jesus responded and said, Were there not ten cleansed? But the nine, where are they? Was no one found who returned to give glory to God, except this foreigner? And he said to him, Stand up and go, your faith has made you well. Now he was questioned by the Pharisees as to when the kingdom of God was coming, and he answered them and said, The kingdom of God is not coming with signs that can be observed, twenty-one nor will they say, Look, here it is, or, there it is. For behold, the kingdom of God ice in your midst. And he said to the disciples, The days will come when you will long to see one of the days of the Son of Man, and you will not see it. And they will say to you, Look there, or, Look here. Do not leave, and do not run after them. For just like the lightning, when it flashes out of one part of the sky, shines to the other part of the sky, so will the Son of Man be in his day. But first he must suffer many things and be rejected by this generation. And just as it happened in the days of Noah, so will it also be in the days of the Son of Man. People were eating, they were drinking, they were marrying, and they were being given in marriage, until the day that Noah entered the ark, and the flood came and destroyed them all. It was the same as happened in the days of Lot, they were eating, they were drinking, they were buying, they were selling, they were planting, and they were building. But on the day that Lot left Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. It will be just the same on the day that the Son of Man is revealed. On that day, the one who will be on the house stop with his goods in the house, must not go down to take them out, and likewise the one in the field must not turn back. Remember Lot's wife. Whoever strives to save his life will lose it, and whoever loses his life will keep it. I tell you, on that night there will be two in one bed, one will be taken and the other will be left. There will be two women grinding at the same place, one will be taken and the other will be left. Two men will be in the field, one will be taken and the other will be left. And responding, they asterisk said to him, Where, Lord? And he said to them, Where the body is, there also the vultures will be gathered. Now he was telling them a parable to show that at all times they ought to pray and not become discouraged. Saying, in a certain city there was a judge who did not fear God and did not respect any person. Now there was a widow in that city, and she kept coming to him, saying, Give me justice against my opponent. For a while he was unwilling, but later he said to himself, Even though I do not fear God nor respect any person, 
Yet because this widow is bothering me, I will give her justice, otherwise be continually coming she will wear me out. And the Lord said, Listen to what the unrighteous judge Asterisk said. Now, will God not bring about justice for his elect who cry out to him day and night, and will he delay long for them? I tell you that he will bring about justice for them quickly. However, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on the earth? Now he also told this parable to some people who trusted in themselves that they were righteous, and viewed others with contempt. Two men went up into the temple to pray, one a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee stood and began praying this in regard to himself, God, I thank you that I am not like other people, swindlers, crooked, adulterers, or even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week, I pay tithes of all that I get. But the tax collector, standing some distance away, was even unwilling to raise his eyes toward heaven, but was beating his chest, saying, God, be merciful to me, the sinner. I tell you, this man went to his house justified rather than the other one, for everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, but the one who humbles himself will be exalted. Now they were bringing even their babies to him so that he would touch them, but when the disciples saw it, they began rebuking them. But Jesus called for the little ones, saying, Allow the children to come to me, and do not forbid them, for the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. Truly I say to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God like a child will not enter it at all. A ruler questioned him, saying, Good teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? But Jesus said to him, Why do you call me good? No one is good except God alone. You know the commandments, do not commit adultery, do not murder, do not steal, do not give false testimony, honor your father and mother. And he said, All these things I have kept since my youth. Now when Jesus heard this, he said to him, One thing you still lack, sell all that you possess and distribute the money to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven and come, follow me. But when he had heard these things, he became very sad, for he was extremely wealthy. And Jesus looked at him and said, How hard it is for those who are wealthy to enter the kingdom of God. For it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle, than for a rich person to enter the kingdom of God. Those who heard him said, And so who can be saved? But he said, The things that are impossible with people are possible with God. Peter said, Behold, we have left our own homes and followed you. And he said to them, Truly I say to you, there is no one who has left house, or wife, or brothers, or parents, or children for the sake of the kingdom of God, who will not receive many times as much at this time, and in the age to come, eternal life. Now he took the twelve aside and said to them, Behold, we are going up to Jerusalem, and all the things that have been written through the prophets about the Son of Man will be accomplished. For he will be handed over to the Gentiles, and will be ridiculed, and abused, and spit upon. And after they have flogged him, they will kill him, and on the third day he will rise. The disciples understood none of these things, and the meaning of this statement was hidden from them, and they did not comprehend the things that were said. Now as Jesus was approaching Jericho, a man who was blind was sitting by the road, begging. But when he heard a crowd going by, he began inquiring what this was. They told him that Jesus of Nazareth was passing by. And he called out, saying, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Those who led the way were sternly telling him to be quiet, but he kept crying out all the more, Son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus stopped and commanded that he be brought to him, and when he came near, 
he asked him. What do you want me to do for you? And he said, Lord, I want to regain my sight. And Jesus said to him, Regain your sight, your faith has made you well. And immediately he regained his sight and began following him, glorifying God, and when all the people saw it, they gave praise to God. Jesus entered Jericho and was passing through. And there was a man called by the name of Zacchaeus, he was a chief tax collector and he was rich. Zacchaeus was trying to see who Jesus was, and he was unable due to the crowd, because he was short in stature. So he ran on ahead and climbed up a sycamore tree in order to see him, because he was about to pass through that way. And when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, hurry and come down, for today I must stay at your house. And he hurried and came down, and received him joyfully. When the people saw this, they all began to complain, saying, he has gone in to be the guest of a man who is a sinner. But Zacchaeus stopped and said to the Lord, Behold, Lord, half of my possessions I am giving to the poor, and if I have extorted anything from anyone, I am giving back four times as much. And Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house, because he, too, is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. Now while they were listening to these things, Jesus went on to tell a parable, because he was near Jerusalem and they thought that the kingdom of God was going to appear immediately. 12 So he said, A nobleman went to a distant country to receive a kingdom for himself, and then to return. And he called ten of his own slaves and gave them ten minas, and said to them, Do business with this money until I come back. But his citizens hated him and sent a delegation after him, saying, We do not want this man to reign over us. When he returned after receiving the kingdom, he ordered that these slaves, to whom he had given the money, be summoned to him so that he would learn how much they had made by the business they had done. The first slave appeared, saying, Master, your mina has made ten minas more. And he said to him, Well done, good slave, since you have been faithful in a very little thing, you are to have authority over ten cities. The second one came, saying, Your mina, master, has made five minas. And he said to him also, And you are to be over five cities. And then another came, saying, Master, here is your mina, which I kept tucked away in a handkerchief. For I was afraid of you, because you are a demanding man, you take up what you did not lay down, and reap what you did not sow. He asterisk said to him, From your own lips I will judge you, you worthless slave. Did you know that I am a demanding man, taking up what I did not lay down, and reaping what I did not sow? And so why did you not put my money in the bank, and when I came back, I would have collected it with interest? And then he said to the other slaves who were present, Take the mina away from him and give it to the one who has the ten minas. And they said to him, Master, he already has ten minas. I tell you that to everyone who has, more shall be given, but from the one who does not have, even what he does have shall be taken away. But as for these enemies of mine who did not want me to reign over them, bring them here and slaughter them in my presence. After Jesus said these things, he was going on ahead, going up to Jerusalem. When he approached Bethphage and Bethany, near the mountain that is called Olivet, he sent two of the disciples, saying, Go into the village ahead of you, there, as you enter, you will find a colt tied, on which no one yet has ever sat, untie it and bring it here. And if anyone asks you, Why are you untying it, you shall say this, The Lord has need of it. So those who were sent left and found it just as he had told them. And as they were untying the colt, its owner said to them, 
Why are you untying the colt? They said, The Lord has need of it. And they brought it to Jesus, and they threw their cloaks on the colt and put Jesus on it. 36 Now as he was going, they were spreading their cloaks on the road. And as soon as he was approaching, near the descent of the Mount of Olives, the whole crowd of the disciples began to praise God joyfully with a loud voice for all the miracles which they had seen. Shouting, Blessed I S the King, the one who comes in the name of the Lord, peace in heaven and glory in the highest. And yet some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to him, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. 40 Jesus replied, I tell you, if these stop speaking, the stones will cry out. When he approached Jerusalem, he saw the city and wept over it. Saying, If you had known on this day, even you, the conditions for peace. But now they have been hidden from your eyes. For the days will come upon you when your enemies will put up a barricade against you, and surround you and hem you in on every side. And they will level you to the ground, and throw down your children within you, and they will not leave in you one stone upon another, because you did not recognize the time of your visitation. And Jesus entered the temple grounds and began to drive out those who were selling, saying to them, It is written, And my house will be a house of prayer, but you have made it a den of robbers. And he was teaching daily in the temple, but the chief priests and the scribes and the leading men among the people were trying to put him to death. And yet they could not find anything that they might do, for all the people were hanging on to every word he said. On one of the days while he was teaching the people in the temple and preaching the gospel, the chief priests and the scribes with the elders confronted him. And they declared, saying to him, Tell us by what authority you are doing these things, or who is the one who gave you this authority? But he replied to them, I will also ask you a question, and you tell me. Was the baptism of John from heaven or from men? They discussed among themselves, saying, If we say, From heaven, he will say, Why did you not believe him? But if we say, From men, all the people will stone us to death, since they are convinced that John was a prophet. And so they answered that they did not know where it came from. And Jesus said to them, Neither am I telling you by what authority I do these things. But he began to tell the people this parable, A man planted a vineyard and leased it to vine growers, and went on a journey for a long time. At the harvest time he sent a slave to the vine growers, so that they would give him his share of the produce of the vineyard, but the vine growers beat him and sent him away empty-handed. And he proceeded to send another slave, but they beat him also and treated him shamefully, and sent him away empty-handed. And he proceeded to send a third, but this one too they wounded and threw out. Now the owner of the vineyard said, What am I to do? I will send my beloved son, perhaps they will respect him. But when the vine growers saw him, they discussed with one another, saying, This is the heir, let's kill him so that the inheritance will be ours. And so they threw him out of the vineyard and killed him. What, then, will the owner of the vineyard do to them? He will come and put these vine growers to death, and will give the vineyard to others. However, when they heard this, they said, May it never happen. But Jesus looked at them and said, Then what is this statement that has been written, a stone which the builders rejected, this has become the chief cornerstone. Everyone who falls on that stone will be broken to pieces, but on whomever it falls, it will crush him. The scribes and the chief priests tried to lay hands on him that very hour, and yet they feared the people, for they were aware that he had spoken this parable against them. And so they watched him closely, and sent spies who pretended to be righteous, in order that they might catch him in some statement, so that they could hand him over to the jurisdiction and authority of the governor. 
And the spies questioned him, saying, Teacher, we know that you speak and teach correctly, and you are not partial to anyone, but you teach the way of God on the basis of truth. Is it permissible for us to pay taxes to Caesar, or not? But he saw through their trickery and said to them, Show me Adenarius. Whose image and inscription does it have? They said, Caesar's. And he said to them, Then pay to Caesar the things that are Caesar's, and to God the things that are God's. And they were unable to catch him in a statement in the presence of the people, and they were amazed at his answer, and said nothing. Now some of the Sadducees, who maintain that there is no resurrection, came to him. And they questioned him, saying, Teacher, Moses wrote for us that if a man's brother dies, leaving a wife, and he is childless, that his brother is to marry the wife and raise up children for his brother. 29 So then, there were seven brothers, and the first took a wife and died childless. And the second. And the third married her, and in the same way all seven died, leaving no children. Finally the woman also died. Therefore, in the resurrection, which one's wife does the woman become? For all seven married her. Jesus said to them, The sons of this age marry and the women are given in marriage. But those who are considered worthy to attain to that age and the resurrection from the dead, neither marry nor are given in marriage. For they cannot even die any more, for they are like angels, and are sons of God, being sons of the resurrection. But as for the fact that the dead are raised, even Moses revealed this in the passage about the burning bush, where he calls the Lord the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. Now he is not the God of the dead, but of the living, for all live to him. Some of the scribes answered and said, Teacher, you have spoken well. For they did not have the courage to question him any longer about anything. But he said to them, How is it that they say the Christ is David's son? For David himself says in the book of Psalms, The Lord said to my Lord, SIT at my right hand, until I make your enemies a footstool for your feet. Therefore David calls him Lord, and so how is he his son? And while all the people were listening, he said to the disciples, Beware of the scribes, who like to walk around in long robes, and love personal greetings in the marketplaces, and chief seats in the synagogues and places of honor at banquets who devour widows' houses, and for appearances' sake offer long prayers. These will receive all the more condemnation. Now he looked up and saw the wealthy putting their gifts into the temple treasury. And he saw a poor widow putting in two lepta coins. And he said, Truly I say to you, this poor widow put in more than all of them. For they all contributed to the offering from their surplus, but she, from her poverty, put in all that she had to live on. And while some were talking about the temple, that it was decorated with beautiful stones and vowed gifts, he said, As for these things which you are observing, the days will come when there will not be left one stone upon another, which will not be torn down. They asked him questions, saying, Teacher, when therefore will these things happen? And what will be the sign when these things are about to take place? And he said, See to it that you are not misled, for many will come in my name, saying, I am he, and, the time is near. Do not go after them. And when you hear of wars and revolts, do not be alarmed, for these things must take place first, but the end will not follow immediately. Then he continued by saying to them, Nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. And there will be massive earthquakes, and in various places plagues and famines, and there will be terrible sights and great signs from heaven. 
But before all these things, they will lay their hands on you and persecute you, turning you over to the synagogues and prisons, bringing you before kings and governors on account of my name. 13 It will lead tone opportunity for your testimony. So make up your minds not to prepare beforehand to defend yourselves. For I will provide you eloquence and wisdom which none of your adversaries will be able to oppose or refute. But you will be betrayed even by parents, brothers and sisters, other relatives, and friends, and they will put some of you to death. And you will be hated by all people because of my name. And yet not a hair of your head will perish. By your endurance you will gain your lives. But when you see Jerusalem surrounded by armies, then recognize that her desolation is near. 21 Then those who are in Judea must flee to the mountains, and those who are inside the city must leave, and those who are in the country must not enter the city. Because these are days of punishment, so that all things which have been written will be fulfilled. Woe to those women who are pregnant, and to those who are nursing babies in those days, for there will be great distress upon the land, and wrath to this people. And they will fall by the edge of the sword, and will be led captive into all the nations, and Jerusalem will be trampled underfoot by the Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles are fulfilled. There will be signs in the sun and moon and stars, and on the earth distress among nations, in perplexity at the roaring of the sea and the waves. People fainting from fear and the expectation of the things that are coming upon the world, for the powers of the heavens will be shaken. And then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. But when these things begin to take place, straighten up and lift up your heads, because your redemption is drawing near. And he told them a parable, Look at the fig tree and all the trees. As soon as they put forth leaves, you see for yourselves and know that summer is now near. So you too, when you see these things happening, recognize that the kingdom of God is near. Truly I say to you, this generation will not pass away until all things take place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But be on your guard, so that your hearts will not be weighed down with dissipation and drunkenness and the worries of life, and that this day will not come on you suddenly, like a trap, 35 for it will come upon all those who live on the face of all the earth. But stay alert at all times, praying that you will have strength to escape all these things that are going to take place, and to stand before the Son of Man. Now during the day he was teaching in the temple, but at evening he would go out and spend the night on the mountain that is called Olivet. And all the people would get up very early in the morning to come to him in the temple to listen to him. Now the Feast of Unleavened Bread, which is called the Passover, was approaching. And the chief priests and the scribes were trying to find a way to put him to death, since they were afraid of the people. And Satan entered Judas, the one called Iscariot, who belonged to the number of the twelve. For and he left and discussed with the chief priests and officers how he was to betray him to them. Five and they were delighted, and agreed to give him money. And so he consented, and began looking for a good opportunity to betray him to them away from the crowd. Now the first day of unleavened bread came, on which the Passover lamb had to be sacrificed. 8 And so Jesus sent Peter and John, saying, Go and prepare the Passover for us, so that we may eat it. They said to him, Where do you want us to prepare it? And he said to them, When you have entered the city, a man carrying a pitcher of water will meet you, follow him into the house that he enters. And you shall say to the owner of the house, The teacher says to you, Where is the guest room in which I may eat the Passover with my disciples? And he will show you a large, furnished upstairs room, prepare it there. 
And they left and found everything just as he had told them, and they prepared the Passover. When the hour came, he reclined at the table, and the apostles with him. And he said to them, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I say to you, I shall not eat it again until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. And when he had taken a cup and given thanks, he said, Take this and share it among yourselves. For I say to you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine from now on until the kingdom of God comes. And when he had taken some bread and given thanks, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, which is being given for you, do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way he took the cup after they had eaten, saying, This cup, which is poured out for you, is the new covenant in my blood. But behold, the hand of the one betraying me is with mine on the table. For indeed, the Son of Man is going as it has been determined, but woe to that man by whom he is betrayed. And they began to debate among themselves which one of them it was who was going to do this. And a dispute also developed among them as to which one of them was regarded as being the greatest. And he said to them, The kings of the Gentiles domineer over them, and those who have authority over them are called benefactors. But it is not this way for you, rather, the one who is the greatest among you must become like the youngest, and the leader like the servant. For who is greater, the one who reclines at the table or the one who serves? Is it not the one who reclines at the table? But I am among you as the one who serves. You are the ones who have stood by me in my trials. And just as my Father has granted me a kingdom, I grant you, that you may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom, and you will sit on thrones judging the twelve tribes of Israel. Simon, Simon, behold, Satan has demanded to sift you men like wheat. But I have prayed for you, that your faith will not fail, and you, when you have turned back, strengthen your brothers. But he said to him, Lord, I am ready to go with you both to prison and to death. But he said, I tell you, Peter, the rooster will not crow today until you have denied three times that you know me. And he said to them, When I sent you out without money belt and bag and sandals, you did not lack anything, did you? They said, No, nothing. And he said to them, But now, whoever has a money belt is to take it along, likewise also a bag, and whoever has no sword is to sell his cloak and buy one. For I tell you that this which is written must be fulfilled in me, and he was counted with wrongdoers, for that which refers to me has its fulfillment. They said, Lord, look, here are two swords. And he said to them, It is enough. And he came out and went, as was his habit, to the Mount of Olives, and the disciples also followed him. Now when he arrived at the place, he said to them, Pray that you do not come into temptation. And he withdrew from them about a stone's throw, and he knelt down and began to pray, saying, Father, if you are willing, remove this cup from me, yet not my will, but yours be done. Now an angel from heaven appeared to him, strengthening him. And being in agony, he was praying very fervently, and his sweat became like drops of blood, falling down upon the ground. When he rose from prayer, he came to the disciples and found them sleeping from sorrow. And he said to them, Why are you sleeping? Get up and pray that you do not come into temptation. While he was still speaking, behold, a crowd came, and the one called Judas, one of the twelve, was leading the way for them, and he approached Jesus to kiss him. But Jesus said to him, Judas, are you betraying the Son of Man with a kiss? When those who were around him saw what was going to happen, they said, Lord, shall we strike with the sword? 
And one of them struck the slave of the high priest and cut off his right ear. But Jesus responded and said, Stop! No more of this! And he touched his ear and healed him. And Jesus said to the chief priests and officers of the temple and elders who had come against him, Have you come out with swords and clubs as you would against a man inciting a revolt? While I was with you daily in the temple, you did not lay hands on me, but this hour and the power of darkness are yours. Now they arrested him and led him away, and brought him to the house of the high priest, but Peter was following at a distance. After they kindled a fire in the middle of the courtyard and sat down together, Peter was sitting among them. And a slave woman, seeing him as he sat in the firelight and staring at him, said, This man was with him as well. But he denied it, saying, I do not know him, woman. And a little later, another person saw him and said, You are one of them too. But Peter said, Man, I am not. And after about an hour had passed, some other man began to insist, saying, Certainly this man also was with him, for he, too, is a Galilean. But Peter said, Man, I do not know what you are talking about. And immediately, while he was still speaking, a rooster crowed. And then the Lord turned and looked at Peter. And Peter remembered the word of the Lord, how he had told him, Before a rooster crows today, you will deny me three times. And he went out and wept bitterly. The men who were holding Jesus in custody began mocking him and beating him. And they blindfolded him and repeatedly asked him, saying, Prophesy, who is the one who hit you? And they were saying many other things against him, blaspheming. When it was day, the council of elders of the people assembled, both chief priests and scribes, and they led him away to their council chamber, saying, If you are the Christ, tell us. But he said to them, If I tell you, you will not believe. And if I ask a question, you will not answer. But from now on the Son of Man will be seated at the right hand of the power of God. And they all said, So you are the Son of God. And he said to them, You say correctly that I am. And then they said, What further need do we have of testimony? For we have heard it ourselves from his own mouth. Then the entire assembly of them set out and brought him before Pilate. And they began to bring charges against him, saying, We found this man misleading our nation and forbidding us to pay taxes to Caesar, and saying that he himself is Christ, a king. Now Pilate asked him, saying, So you are the king of the Jews? And he answered him and said, It is as you say. But Pilate said to the chief priests and the crowds, I find no grounds for charges in the case of this man. But they kept on insisting, saying, He is stirring up the people, teaching all over Judea, starting from Galilee, as far as this place. Now when Pilate heard this, he asked whether the man was a Galilean. And when he learned that he belonged to Herod's jurisdiction, he sent him to Herod, since he also was in Jerusalem at this time. Now Herod was overjoyed when he saw Jesus, for he had wanted to see him for a long time, because he had been hearing about him and was hoping to see some sign performed by him. 9 And he questioned him at some length, but he offered him no answer at all. Now the chief priests and the scribes stood there, vehemently charging him. And Herod, together with his soldiers, treated him with contempt and mocked him, dressing him in a brightly shining robe, and sent him back to Pilate. And so Herod and Pilate became friends with one another that very day, for previously, they had been enemies toward each other. Now Pilate summoned to himself the chief priests, the rulers, and the people. And he said to them, You brought this man to me on the ground that he is inciting the people to revolt, and behold, 
after examining him before you, I have found no basis at all in the case of this man for the charges which you are bringing against him. No, nor has Herod, for he sent him back to us, and behold, nothing deserving death has been done by him. Therefore I will punish him and release him. Now he was obligated to release to them at the feast one prisoner. But they cried out altogether, saying, Away with this man, and release to us Barabbas. He was one who had been thrown into prison for a revolt that took place in the city, and for murder. Twenty but Pilate, wanting to release Jesus, addressed them again. But they kept on crying out, saying, Crucify, crucify him. And he said to them a third time, Why, what has this man done wrong? I have found in his case no grounds for a sentence of death, therefore I will punish him and release him. But they were insistent, with loud voices, demanding that he be crucified. And their voices began to prevail. And so Pilate decided to have their demand carried out. And he released the man for whom they were asking, who had been thrown into prison for a revolt and murder, but he handed Jesus over to their will. And when they led him away, they seized a man, Simon of Cyrene, as he was coming in from the country, and placed on him the cross to carry behind Jesus. Now following him was a large crowd of the people, and of women who were mourning and grieving for him. But Jesus turned to them and said, Daughters of Jerusalem, stop weeping for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. For behold, days are coming when they will say, Blessed are those who cannot bear, and the wombs that have not given birth, and the breasts that have not nursed. Then they will begin to say to the mountains, Fall on us, and to the hills, cover us. For if they do these things when the tree is green, what will happen when it is dry? Now two others, who were criminals, were also being led away to be put to death with him. And when they came to the place called the Skull, there they crucified him and the criminals, one on the right and the other on the left. But Jesus was saying, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And they cast lots, dividing his garments among themselves. And the people stood by, watching. And even the rulers were sneering at him, saying, He saved others, let him save himself if this is the Christ of God, his chosen one. The soldiers also ridiculed him, coming up to him, offering him sour wine. And saying, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. Now there was also an inscription above him, This is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who were hanged there was hurling abuse at him, saying, Are you not the Christ? Save yourself and us. But the other responded, and rebuking him, said, Do you not even fear God, since you are under the same sentence of condemnation? And we indeed are suffering justly, for we are receiving what we deserve for our crimes, but this man has done nothing wrong. And he was saying, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And he said to him, Truly I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. It was now about the sixth hour, and darkness came over the entire land until the ninth hour, forty-five because the sun stopped shining, and the veil of the temple was torn in two. And Jesus, crying out with a loud voice, said, Father, into your hands I entrust my spirit. And having said this, he died. Now when the centurion saw what had happened, he began praising God, saying, This man was in fact innocent. And all the crowds who came together for this spectacle, after watching what had happened, began to return home, beating their chests. And all his acquaintances and the women who accompanied him from Galilee were standing at a distance, seeing these things. And a man named Joseph, who was a member of the council, 
a good and righteous man 51, he had not consented to their plan and action, a man from Arimathea, a city of the Jews, who was waiting for the kingdom of God. This man went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. And he took it down and wrapped it in a linen cloth, and laid him in a tomb cut into the rock, where no one had ever lain. It was a preparation day, and a Sabbath was about to begin. Now the women who had come with him from Galilee followed, and they saw the tomb and how his body was laid. And then they returned and prepared spices and perfumes. And on the Sabbath they rested according to the commandment. But on the first day of the week, at early dawn, they came to the tomb bringing the spices which they had prepared. And they found the stone rolled away from the tomb. But when they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were perplexed about this, behold, two men suddenly stood near them in gleaming clothing. And as the women were terrified and bowed their faces to the ground, the men said to them, Why are you seeking the living one among the dead? He is not here, but he has risen. Remember how he spoke to you while he was still in Galilee, saying that the Son of Man must be handed over to sinful men, and be crucified, and on the third day rise from the dead. And they remembered his words, and returned from the tomb and reported all these things to the eleven, and to all the rest. Now these women were Mary Magdalene, Joanna, and Mary the mother of James, also the other women with them were telling these things to the apostles. But these words appeared to them as nonsense, and they would not believe the women. Nevertheless, Peter got up and ran to the tomb, and when he stooped and looked in, he asterisk saw the linen wrappings only, and he went away to his home, marveling at what had happened. And behold, on that very day two of them were going to a village named Emmaus, which was sixty stadia from Jerusalem. And they were talking with each other about all these things which had taken place. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself approached and began traveling with them. But their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, what are these words that you are exchanging with one another as you are walking? And they came to a stop, looking sad. One of them, named Cleopa, answered and said to him, Are you possibly the only one living near Jerusalem who does not know about the things that happened here in these days? And he said to them, What sort of things? And they said to him, Those about Jesus the Nazarene, who proved to be a prophet mighty in deed and word in the sight of God and all the people. And how the chief priests and our rulers handed him over to be sentenced to death, and crucified him. But we were hoping that it was he who was going to redeem Israel. Indeed, besides all this, it is now the third day since these things happened. But also some women among us left us bewildered when they were at the tomb early in the morning. And did not find his body, they came, saying that they had also seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. And so some of those who were with us went to the tomb, and found it just exactly as the women also had said, but him they did not see. And then he said to them, You foolish men and slow of heart to believe in all that the prophets have spoken. Was it not necessary for the Christ to suffer these things and to come into his glory? Then beginning with Moses and with all the prophets, he explained to them the things written about himself in all the scriptures. And they approached the village where they were going, and he gave the impression that he was going farther. And so they strongly urged him, saying, Stay with us, for it is getting toward evening, and the day is now nearly over. So he went in to stay with them. And it came about, when he had reclined at the table with them, that he took the bread and blessed it, and he broke it and began giving it to them. And then their eyes were opened and they recognized him, 
and he vanished from their sight. They said to one another, Were our hearts not burning within us when he was speaking to us on the road, while he was explaining the scriptures to us? And they got up that very hour and returned to Jerusalem, and found the eleven gathered together and those who were with them. Saying, The Lord has really risen and has appeared to Simon. They began to relate their experiences on the road, and how he was recognized by them at the breaking of the bread. Now while they were telling these things, Jesus himself suddenly stood in their midst and asterisk said to them, Peace be to you. But they were startled and frightened, and thought that they were looking at a spirit. And he said to them, Why are you frightened, and why are doubts arising in your hearts? See my hands and my feet, that it is I myself, touch me and see, because a spirit does not have flesh and bones as you plainly see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While they still could not believe it because of their joy and astonishment, he said to them, Have you anything here to eat? They served him a piece of broiled fish. And he took it and ate it in front of them. Now he said to them, These are my words which I spoke to you while I was still with you, that all the things that are written about me in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. And he said to them, So it is written, that the Christ would suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance for forgiveness of sins would be proclaimed in his name to all the nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. And behold, I am sending the promise of my Father upon you, but you are to stay in the city until you are clothed with power from on high. And he led them out as far as Bethany, and he lifted up his hands and blessed them. While he was blessing them, he parted from them and was carried up into heaven. And they, after worshipping him, returned to Jerusalem with great joy, and were continually in the temple praising God.